everybody, and welcome to the closing bell, a market sell-off on Wall Street today. Take a look at what's happening across the major stock indexes. I'm Kelly Evans down here at the New York Stock Exchange. Bill, it's been a sea of red. For the stock market, different story for the bond market where yields have come down. The 10-year Treasury yielding for a time below 2.5% for the first time in about six months. That has the markets, uh, again, it's a, a, a conundrum. If the stock market earlier had been signaling a stronger economy, why are yields in the Treasury market going down, which seems to signal a slowing economy? It's something we'll be kicking around a lot today. It is the talk of the town, if uh, if we could say. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, meanwhile, is off about 168 points. At the session low, we are off more than 200, so a little bit of a comeback here, clawing the way back anyway, but we're still decisively negative. Meanwhile. The Nasdaq off about six tenths of one percent, or 25 points today. 4074 is where that index stands, and the S&P 500 shedding 17, almost one percent. So it's right in line with the Dow. There, there is broad selling today. And let's show you the Russell 2000. We've been highlighting that because that has been the leader to the downside for much of this move lower. But today, even though it was down 1.4 percent or thereabouts at one time, that has come back this afternoon. Interestingly. But the blue chips have not followed suit. Something we'll keep an eye on as we go into the final hour of trading here for this Thursday. But let's kick things around in our closing bell exchange today. Sharon Stark is with us with D.A. Davidson. We have John Kozar from Asbury Research, David Molnar from Hightower, Greg Ipp from The Economist, and our own Rick Santelli. And I'm going to start with Greg Ipp there. You think the bond market is way too bearish on the economy, right? Well, I, look, I've asked, talked to a lot of people, Bill, and nobody can really understand why the bond is doing what it's doing. The best explanation is what Jim Bianco said on this show uh, yesterday. Too many people thinking the bond market's going down, and so it's got to go up. That is to say yields have to go down. But today, I think the main thing you have to look at, Bill, is look at what's happening in Europe. The economy doing much worse than anybody expected. The German bond is down even more in yield terms today than the, than the American bond. I think that tells you that worldwide we're still in a period of disinflation, weak growth then you just really should not be too short duration in that kind of a situation. A great point, Greg. The trading session today actually illustrates this as well. We saw pressure start to come off the, the selling in the stock space at around 1130 when Europe's markets closed. That was when some of the worst losses of the session were all recorded this morning. And by the way, yes. take a quick listen. Here's what uh, Jim Bianco had to say about how much further this rally in rates could continue about where he sees the 10 year yeah, going. Listen to this. On the program yesterday. I think that this capitulation trade that we're going to see now is a lot larger than people think. Bond okay. yields can fall a lot more before this is over with. Well, Jim, wow. we got to go, but where do you think wait, the 10-year yeah. is headed? What's the number, Jim? Low twos. It's going to go low to the low twos. twos. Rick Santelli, do you see low twos on the 10-year at some point? I think there's a 60% chance that we could see low twos. I think there's a 40% chance we could see 160. Wow. It all depends wow. on how, how thin you believe the ice is under the stock market. And I'll tell you what, I, I like uh, Jim Bianco a lot. I have him on all the time. But I really think that even though you can say everybody's off sides and it's short covering, why are they off sides? What made the positions what they are? That really is, if you don't answer that, you don't learn enough to trade beyond this, in my opinion. And I think look no further than Europe. They have managed to put rates for countries whose economies are still high. Highly questionable, well below levels of true value. And that is coming back to, I think, Draghi's book about how I use my bazooka in one is about ready to have a new epilogue written, and it isn't going to be pretty. Greg Ibb talked about bad data in Europe. I've talked about that, but it wasn't the, the European data, the German GP, uh, GDP was actually better than they were looking for. So why did Boone yields really go down? For the same reason that our yields are going down relative value we saw the southern European yields pop up 16 18 basis points against a six basis point drop in boons that means those spreads widen close to 25 basis points that Rick. is risk Jim's right it's short covering but it's a risk trade 
Rick, I guess I got to jump in here for a second. The the uh, the bond yield is going down because German bond yields don't respond to German growth; they respond to European growth and European I monetary policy. I completely understand, but it's the relative value of the spread that matters. Because now flip it over, we have 120 basis points higher than that 130 yield in Europe. What do you think that's going to do to us? It's well, exactly. But, but you know, Rick, I understand. you're pointing, Greg. Here's the common thread between what you're both saying, which is. If, generally speaking, despite what happened in Germany, European growth was a little bit weak and the ECB is more likely to act, then it's perhaps no surprise you're seeing what some pressure act? on the more See, struggling parts I, of the economy I agree with while the German bond yield is falling. I don't David, think David, I just they could have I want to get you to weigh in here enough. as well. Where do you see rates headed next and why? David. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Um, we see rates going lower. I, th I think to attribute the decline in rates as to you know, wrong side of positioning completely understates what the market's telling us. The bond market is signaling that the economy is not as strong as Wall Street and economists told us it was going to be. And it's not just weather related. So, so we look at a, a 10 year yield under 250. And, and if you ignore that, I think you ignore that at your own peril. I think investors need to be positioned appropriately. Uh, we need to be balanced and think about you know, what that means for risk assets. Why do you think the stock market's got it wrong and the bond market right? Why can't it be the other way around, necessarily? I'm just playing devil's advocate well, here. Well, I, I mean, think... historically, the bond, the bond market is bigger. The bond market has a lot more capital there. And, and that's really, the, the, generally speaking, the smart money is in fixed income. So you know, equities are getting pushed around a lot by QE. Well. Now, uh, sure are getting pushed around rates, by Bill, Kiwi policy. Real finance and finance structures based on these rates. There's a realness to these rates that yeah. you can't really apply to an equity index in the same fashion. All right, Sharon Stark, let me bring you in because you think that actually we're going to see an acceleration uh, in the economy going forward, don't you? I think we will see an acceleration in the economy just because businesses and consumers have cash to spend. And let's face it, if and look at look at the individual in their household if you have money in your savings account right now it's hardly earning anything and it's hardly been earning anything for a long time so consumers are going to start spending they're going to start investing and i think businesses will as well but with that said the bond market clearly is not paying attention attention to the fundamentals i think the weakness in the stock market is driven a lot by selling by pension funds who have been overweight equities. They're now getting closer to being fully funded and they're not going to make the same mistakes they did in 2008 by That's holding on. Point, Sharon, I think they yeah, take those gains. And they move it into the bond market. And I think that's really led to a lot of support to the long end. Go ahead, John. With all due respect yeah. there, I mean, we've been hearing that story. Sorry, we've been hearing that story for years now that things are going to get better and consumers and businesses are going to spend, but we haven't been seeing it. So this is the fifth year in a row that we're going to check it off and say we're not seeing it yet. Uh, John, well, I, what about you? Where, where do you stand here? Do you also see rates going lower? And if so, why? Actually, we do. Uh, we've been looking for 251 since the beginning of the year. So we just hit 251 today. But I think the bigger level of watch is down at 240. That's the low from October of 2011, the high from or, uh, uh, March 2011, the high from March 2012. There's a lot of activity around 240. So that's where I think we're probably going. Does that mean the mortgage the rate is going to go sub 4% in this country again? Uh, I think it could. I think yes. they will. I think it could. Can I make a quick wow. point I, here, Kelly? Yeah, I think right, at 240, I, I, if I could go on a little further, oh, sure, please. at 240 Sorry, is a real big deal here. For, uh, 240 is a huge level. I think it's one of the most important levels on the chart. If we take out 240, our next big level downstairs is around 210, 205. So watch 240 really closely. Well, Rick Santelli's watching 160. Go ahead, uh, Greg Gibb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if we actually get to 240 or even closer to two, like Jim Bianco thinks, I mean, let's keep in mind that is not consistent with the path for interest rates that the Fed has told us they expect to follow. So if we continue with the bond uh, rally that we've had, somebody's going to be proven wrong. Either the bond market is wrong and it's going to sell off bad when the Fed moves to tighten, or the Fed will be mm -hmm. wrong about the economy and has to move its numbers out. So one way or another, something's going to get broken. And just to make I this a, extra interesting and to illustrate the extent to which perhaps everybody in a sense here can be right, 
Look at what's happening in the corporate bond space. Corporate bond yields are falling. They are not rising, especially for some of the riskiest borrowers in the whole universe out there. In other words, that doesn't happen when growth is deteriorating. It happens when people are reaching for yield or what have you, but there's nothing in this market that's consistent with people jumping out of the riskiest parts of the market, guys. They're all piling back in, and that tells you that for whatever reason, we have lower rates right now, perhaps relative to the macro fundamentals. This credit boom is getting another leg. And that's a fascinating well, you know thing what, that perhaps Kelly, nobody saw coming. Just right? because there's a company there are many places for the bonds to go. Cheap, one, one doesn't time, mean that the first. company. If company XYZ can borrow cheap, it's just like the same people that say copper, I, I don't see a bad thing going on in the global economy because copper's up. Well, look at what copper did before the credit crisis. Stocks started going down, copper right. kept going up. Company yep. XYZ can borrow cheap. It doesn't mean that any of their customers are going to be interacting with them in six months. Borrowing cheap in a clean balance sheet is not necessarily an indicator of trouble ahead. And Rick, what's fascinating to connect those two episodes is that we did have a commodity bubble and we're having a credit bubble for the same reason, which is going back to the pension funds Sharon was talking about to some extent, because everybody needs pension funds, some of the entitlement funds out there, 7%, 8%. The Leverage lower rates go, the more they have to pile into some of this stuff to chase for yield, the more that's going to create a bubble now that does, to your point, and badly it down the road. Sharon Stark, what exactly. are you buying in the stock market? You like stocks here. What are you buying here? You know, it's hard to really tell given what's happened recently, but I think I would say fundamentally, you know, we do like the electronic sector, we like the real estate sector, um, agriculture, but really my focus has been on fixed income and the corporate market is a concern. I think Rick makes a very good point that money is cheap to borrow right now, but what do you do with it? What kind of return do you get for it? So I'm, I'm actually a bit worried about corporate spreads because they are widening and I think if this rally continues in treasuries, you'll like to see, likely see them widen. There's not a lot of liquidity out there right now. Um, it's actually a little frightening. Yeah, and liquidity issues, Sharon, that's one as well. People have been warning us about a time and again. As long yes. as everyone's buying, it's on the back burner. But as soon as people go to sell, that's when it's really going to come to the floor. It'll be Great, yeah. very interesting to see if there will be a liquid market when, when buyers go to sell, just due to the regulation that's really caused uh, dealers to shrink right. their balance sheets. Greg, right, very right. quickly, is it is it possible what we're experiencing in the aggregate is more kind of the, the markets getting adjusted to less and less Fed intervention? Is this just the patient starting to come off the morphine right now? I think it's bigger than that, Bill. I think that what we've seen in the last year or two is like just a complete volatility crash where quantitative easing, you know, basically crushed any effort for the market to move violently one way or the other. You were talking, Kelly was talking a second ago about how VIX is so low. That is, you know, it's a good environment for risk assets, but it's not a natural environment. It's too calm. There's too little volatility. And I think that we need to be prepared in the coming year for uh, the data to be a little bit more surprising, the Fed perhaps to surprise us at least once or twice. And when vol goes up, risk risk assets go down even when earnings and other fundamentals look reasonable. Yeah. All right, folks, we have to go to this point. Thank you so much. This yeah, is John such David, too. Really Thank appreciate you. that perspective on where the 10 years headed. Such a fascinating time right now, don't you no, think? Because look, if, who the Fed, if you hand this scenario to the Fed, ultimately what does it mean? Suddenly, instead of having slightly higher interest rates at this point in the experience,